You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, we've got a huge development in the Fulton County, Georgia case against Trump with regard to DA Fonnie Willis. Can you speak on that? Yeah, so DA Willis filed a motion with the court to get a defense attorney basically removed from representing 10 fake electors. And the allegations in this motion are pretty blockbuster, really bad for the lawyer whose name is Kim Kimberly Burroughs DeBro. So DeBro represents 10 different clients. All of these clients are allegedly fake electors. They had signed, you know, false election certificates saying Donald Trump won the election. Those crimes are being investigated by District Attorney Fawny Willis. And on um, according to the motion that was filed to disqualify this lawyer, um, there were meetings with two of those fake electors together with their lawyer, Ms. DeBro. And during that meeting, and those there were two meetings, they occurred on April 12th and April 14th. So, you know, this just happened. Um, during the meeting, these two fake electors who are targets of the grand jury investigation told Fawny Willis that Ms. DeBro never told them that Fawny Willis extended immunity deals to them back in 2022. So in other words, an attorney chose for whatever reason not to communicate to the client that the district attorney, the prosecutor, was offering them an enormous benefit, an immunity agreement, which means they would probably never be prosecuted for the crimes if they just accepted the immunity and came in and testified truthfully. Let me tell you, Brian, that is a big ticket ethical transgression for a lawyer to withhold from their client information about a really beneficial offer that was extended by the prosecutor. That was one of the alleged missteps. Here's the second one. So Mrs. DeBro represents 10 clients, 10 fake electors. And what Fawny Willis discovered was that two of these clients, two of these fake electors said, you know what? One of the other fake electors represented by Ms. DeBro committed crimes in violation of Georgia state law, and we had nothing to do with that. Well, you know, now Ms. DeBro's loyalties are split between and among her several clients because she might have to represent the interests of one client if that client wants to flip against another client. So these are actually two significant ethical missteps by Ms. DeBro. And as a result, Fonny Willis asked the judge to kick her off of all of those cases. Okay, a, a bunch of questions here, but the immediate one is, what are the repercussions for a, a, a lawyer who basically does this? Like, what can happen to her? The allegations in D.A. Willis's filing with the court uh, are accurate. We have no reason to believe they're not. This will absolutely necessitate a bar counsel referral for Mr. Bro. And these are big ticket ethical transgressions. These are not minor missteps. So this could this could absolutely result in her being sanctioned, being suspended from the practice of law, and perhaps even being disbarred. I feel like we say this every time, like the the you know, anybody in Trump's orbit is where uh, is where law licenses go to die. Glenn, what happens in the instance that a lawyer does represent two different clients and one of them tries to flip on another? Like what happens when you have when you have a lawyer representing two clients uh, and your loyalties are split between your own clients? Do you have to drop one? First and foremost, you, you actually have to drop both. The lawyer has an ethical responsibility to withdraw from representation when there's a conflict. And you can't just withdraw from one because now you're using information that you got in confidence from one client to the advantage or the disadvantage of another client. That's why basically the rules of ethics say you've got to withdraw from all representations when you have that kind of a conflict. Okay, makes total sense. Will this development make it more likely at all that any of these fake electors will cooperate with DA Willis or flip? Absolutely will make it more likely. Here's why. Once these 10 targets of the investigation, these fake electors get their own conflict-free counsel, they're going to be able to negotiate freely with the district attorney's office to see if they want to come in, they want to cooperate, they may want to take that immunity deal that had been extended to them by D.A. Willis, but never communicated to them by Ms. DeBro. So this can only increase the odds. And I think it could increase the odds pretty substantially that 
D.A. Willis might be able to develop some cooperating witnesses among these 10 fake electors. What are the implications for Trump in all of this? Like, how can these fake electors, like, what can they do here that would hurt Trump in this case? Because this case is revolving around him. If the fake electors were in communication with or complicit with anybody from the Trump campaign, the Trump camp, any of Trump's, you know, lack lackeys, flunkies, loyalists, sycophants, then eventually it could build its way back to Donald Trump. But here's the thing, Brian, any witness, any target of this investigation who cooperates truthfully and fully with District Attorney Fawny Willis's criminal investigation can only inure to Trump's detriment. Now, this is the case that a lot of us were focusing on in terms of the one that would hurt Trump the most that seemed to be the most immediate. So how does this impact, I guess, uh, the, the timetable here? Like, how does this impact what, we're, what, we're, uh, what we were told was an imminent decision by Fawny Willis uh, as to whether or not she would indict? Yeah, it's tough to predict whether this will accelerate, decelerate, or have no impact on Fawny Willis's time frame. But, but here is the guess I'm going to take. It's an educated guess. If you need to now get 10 lawyers to represent 10 different targets of a grand jury investigation, um, it's going to take some time for Fawny Willis's team to negotiate, to interact with all of these 10 lawyers and make some assessments about whether any of these 10 fake electors um, are now um, in, interested in coming on board, assisting the prosecution, um, flipping, in essence, and helping Fawny Willis move toward indictments. I don't think it will accelerate things. It could actually slow things down just a little bit. In your opinion, do you think that this development makes the case against Trump uh, stronger on DA Willis's behalf? I think this development has the very real likelihood of producing some cooperating witnesses. Whether those cooperating witnesses will directly implicate Trump or not, I think is, is impossible to answer. But here's what it does do. We've heard reporting that Fawny Willis is contemplating indicting up to 20 people. So any cooperating witness will build the strength of D.A. Willis's conspiracy case and ultimately her conspiracy indictment. And the stronger that case is against whoever it is Fawny Willis decides to indict, the more dangerous it is to Donald Trump. Great. And, and let's finish off with this. And this is something we've talked about in the past, but I think it's worth repeating because I know a lot of people heard, you know, months ago at this point, Fawny Willis come forward and say that her decision would be imminent. That obviously wasn't the case. Can you explain why she might have come out and said that her decision as to whether or not to indict would be imminent only to then basically allow this to languish, at least in the front facing view, allow this to languish for a few more months thereafter? Yeah, it's a great question because I think we all experienced some frustration when we heard Fawny Willis say her charging decisions are imminent. I think what we heard, I know what I heard was indictments are imminent. Those are actually two different assertions. Fawny Willis, once she makes her charging decisions about charging, indicting as many as 20 people, the next thing she has to do is approach, in theory, 20 different defense attorneys or defense teams and say, I've made my charging decision based on all of the evidence we amassed during the grand jury investigation. Your client will be a named defendant in this big conspiracy indictment. Do you want to consider coming in and cooperating rather than your client seeing his or her name as a marquee defendant on one of the most consequential indictments in American history? So she may have made her charging decisions already. That doesn't mean she's in a position to finally and definitively ask the grand jury to vote out indictments because she may not know the precise contours of who's going to end up an indicted defendant. Yeah, I think I think for us out here, we kind of just assume that when she made that announcement that her decisions would be imminent, that that was for our benefit. When I think what you and I have have discussed a, a few times now is that was really just a, kind of a shot across the bow for for these um, these potential indictees that you know now is time to to either come over to come over to her side and 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 help or risk getting indicted themselves. So um, so I think that's just something 
important to keep in mind. And that's one of these rare instances where I think it's okay that she takes the time that's needed to do this right. And if that was a message to those people and uh, it kind of redounds to her benefit because, you know, maybe she gets a few people who do decide to cooperate because, she, you know, she gave them this last minute decision, then I think that's ultimately a good thing. I would rather this thing be done right than done quickly. And I'll tell you, and Brian, I, nothing will focus the attention of a target of a grand jury investigation like being told you sport are about to be indicted. <laughs> right, right. So we'll keep on top of this case. As soon as we have any developments, we'll uh, do another episode here. For those watching, make sure to subscribe. The links are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown. <laughs>